Hi, this is Jim Gibson from Blackstone Cybersecurity, and I want to talk to you today about setting a password. Now, just to let you know a little bit about Blackstone, we're a consulting group. We can help you with your cybersecurity issues. We have like 75 years of experience, uh, combined experience in, a, in our staff, and uh, we can also help you with your IT department, designing it, everything else. Go look on our website, take a look at it. The top things you need to consider when you're doing passwords. One is your password needs to be more than eight figures, eight digits. Um, you know, a couple years ago, that was a great deal. That was what everyone said. Hey, if you have a password that has eight characters in it, you're absolutely fine, no problem at all, go with that. Today, that's not acceptable. So pay attention to the date of this video because five years from now, it may be a different story. So. What you need to do today is I would recommend 16 digits. I maximize my digit goes far beyond 16. The next, do not use dictionary words. Uh, I know that was something that was used in the past. Uh, there's software out there that's downloadable that uh, its main purpose is trying to break passwords. And it, it goes, the first thing it does is it goes through the English dictionary a couple times and it can do that within a couple minutes. So it can try to log in, you know, a million, two million times into your account and using all different types of dictionary words. And if you use a dictionary word, you're gonna get hacked. So don't use dictionary words. The next is it must be what they call complex. And a complex password has three characteristics. So first of all, in its alpha setting, it's gonna have uppercase and lowercase and don't necessarily capitalize the first letter in, in, in whatever you know, password you use. But you know, think about uppercase, lowercase, couple uppercases, couple lowercases, that'd work fine. The second thing it needs is symbols. So you know, a pound sign, an explanation sign, a question mark, it needs things like that. It needs a couple of those, I would put a couple of those in there. And then the last is it needs numbers, you know, 10, 15, 25, 32, 1, 3, something like that. So you want to use those three. It should be 16 characters long. The next thing is, uh, easy way to remember it is use a phrase. So, you know, um, you want to talk about your family a little bit. You know, uh, I have uh, 16 grandchildren and they live in Louisiana and I love them very much. We'll use the first letter of each of those words. Once you get the phrase down, you're able to remember it. You know, just use the first letter of each word, and you throw in some characters and numbers in there. Well, you know, you got 16 grandchildren, you're doing pretty good. Um, at the same time, you know, 16, there you go. Yeah, so it, it satisfies that. Um, and then uh, the last and uh, uh, the thing that's most important is never repeat the password um, on different accounts. So if you have, let's say, uh, Yahoo. Does anyone have Yahoo anymore? I'm going to pick them up because I'm going to tell you about the hack in Yahoo. But if anyone has a Yahoo account, um, uh, the people that had it a couple years back, the, if they were using the same login and password for all those others, their Gmails, their bank accounts, everything else, when Yahoo was hacked and they got all those passwords and logins, I tell you what, the hackers weren't interested in getting into Yahoo. They were interested in checking to see if you used that password and that login for all your other accounts. So they would check to see if you had Gmail, they'd check your bank, they'd check this, they'd check that. You know, it's pretty profitable for these hackers. So if you use the same password on every single account, they have it all. By the time you find out that, that one website you always go to that you love, by the time you figure that out, they've been in all your accounts. So you gotta have a different password for each account. Now, that really gets confusing now, doesn't it? And that gets difficult to do. And I got an answer for you. It's called a password manager. They're free on the internet and they're pretty secure. They're a good idea. And I use password managers. And so all I have to know is one single password and that's to get into my password manager. And the password manager can be programmed in such a way that it will actually um, design uh, your passwords for you. So you can have a complex password. You don't have to think it through or anything. All you need to do is remember that one password. And so each site has a different password according to the password manager. And um, you don't even need, need to look at it. You just log into your site, you type in your, or you go to the site and it will actually put in your login uh, at that site. And it will actually put in the password and 
just like that, you're there. Faster than you can type in your own password. Faster than you can actually do your login. That's how good it is. So I'm not going to recommend any type of um, uh, password manager. Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there. You need to go into the internet and you need to see what people are saying about the different password managers. Look at the history because you know one might be good today, tomorrow it might not be good. There might be something better out there, but there's some freebies out there and they really work well. They're secure, everything else. And you know, some people say, well, you know, they could be hacked. Yeah, yeah, just about everything could be hacked at one point in life. But the, the bottom line is, is these are pretty secure and uh, this is the best way to handle all your passwords. Now, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about, but not on this video, and that's going to be two-factor authentication. And what that means is that not only do you put in your login and your password into an account, but then you can get a, 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 a third item, uh, such as a, 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 a six-digit code, a four-digit code on your cell phone. It will instantly call your cell phone. Or, um, you know, you can use a... a, a a, um, I'm trying to think, a hard drive, a thumb drive uh, that has your password on it. There's some other things. Don't want to go into it right here. Go look at my other uh, uh, video uh, that talks about two-factor authentication. It should be right here on my website. Take a look at that and that will help you in that area and uh, you also need to come up with a policy. So let's say if you're an owner of a business um, you know your CEO, your president or your board uh, is involved in this uh, you need to have a password policy and this can't be set up by your IT department. Your IT department is great but you have to tell the IT department what your policy is going to be and it has to be workable I understand that but it has to be secure also and there's ways to do that. There's ways to do it in software where you can require people to change their password. There's ways to do it um, uh, it, it, you know that people can remember their passwords using a password manager and things like that but the passwords have to be changed every so often and you have to manage that and you have to uh, force those changes through your software and it has to start with policies everything in cybersecurity always starts with a policy remember uh, you can't have the tail wag the dog you gotta have the dog wag the tail so you have to come up with the policies if you're president of a company if you're the CEO, you're on the board, you are legally responsible for your network and legally responsible for that information on your network. Again, this is Jim Gibson with Blackstone Cybersecurity. We do consulting. Uh, we have over 75 years of experience in IT and in cybersecurity, and we know what we're talking about, and we're more than happy uh, to work for your company to help you set up these policies, procedures, and more than just passwords, but actually design an IT um, department for you and tell you where your shortcomings are, tell you where your strengths are, and help you uh, hire people. We do a lot of things. Check out our website, give us a call. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>